Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kieran McLean and this is my channel where we talk of everything about kidney disease. So first of all, some of you might be noticing we've got a new camera angle here. More activity to do hand gestures and whatnot. And you also might be thinking, last week I didn't post. I did put something out on Facebook and Twitter about how I had an epiphany looking back on my videos. How I wasn't really enjoying or liking what I was putting out there. I felt like my content was a bit robotic and probably a bit boring to watch for you guys. So I'm not surprised that some of you might not have been coming back. But I'm back now, hoping to produce better content. And let's go on to today's video. So today's video is following on once again from last time. We're going to be talking about the recovery after transplant rather than the process through transplant. So from the moment you come out of theatre up until about the three month mark, which is, tends to be when doctors say is the long, the right amount of recovery time until you can start living a normal life again. So we're going to start this from the moment I went into theatre. From my story video, some of you might know, it was at half three in the morning on the 20th of August 2019. Now I was there from about half three till about half seven-ish, so it was about four hours. They typically say transplant lasts between two to four hours. So I was within schedule for that. So at about half seven, I got back onto the ward and this is where I was probably zonked out because of all the anaesthetic I'd had. I, it took me about a couple hours to get back to my senses. So it was not till about half nine, 10 o'clock in the morning, which is when I realized that everything was a success and went smoothly. Now, the first thing they did when I came back to my senses was they immediately started me on immune suppressants. Now, this was to make sure my immune system and my body wasn't going to reject the kidney. I'd just been transplanted immediately as my immune system would recognise it as a foreign object and probably try to reject it, which would make it go back into failure immediately, pretty much. So they started me off on my immune suppressants and then they would have done my bloods to make sure that the kidneys start to show improvement in my bloods. Usually within the first couple hours you'll start to see an improvement in your kidney function. They also then followed that up with some obs, of obs which is what they call when you have your blood pressure, pulse and your temperature checked. Now because the first day is the most critical day they were very observant on me. They would be doing hourly obs on me and they probably did at least two or three blood tests on the first day too. Now when my bloods come back through, the main bloods that they'll be looking at in my results would be my EGFR or GFR, depending on which hospital you're at, they read it differently. Uh, my creatinine, my urea and my potassium. Now a mixture between these four is that they'll be able to, doctors will be able to indicate whether um, the kidney's starting to take over or not. Now, in my own personal experience, from the first day of bloods, there wasn't really much improvement in my um, kidney function as I'd liked. So that's when on the first evening, I had a temporary neckline inserted into the side of my neck, about here somewhere. And that's when I had um, hemodialysis on the first night. Now, this isn't something that happens to every single kidney transplant patient. The only reason I had it is because my kidney function was, wasn't at a suitable level to leave it overnight. Otherwise, I might have become quite ill as the kidney wasn't strong enough yet to take over all the toxins and remove them all. So, after my hemodialysis, which was a few hours, about three or four hours, even though I was still zonked at that point, I didn't really know what was going on, to be honest. Um, I was put back onto my, well, I was already on the ward, but I did put back to where my bed was. And that's when I spent the night, first night in. Now, this night, I was, every couple hours, I was wearing obs. So, apart from being uncomfortable and being sore, I was having obs done every couple hours. So, if I was to luckily somehow doze off, then I was getting woken up anyway. So the first night was probably the longest night ever. 
But luckily enough for me, the first bloods I had on the day two in the morning, we started to see some improvement in my bloods. So that was a sign that the kidney was starting to wake up and starting to do what it's got to do. So luckily for me, I didn't have to have any more dialysis after that. But they kept my neckline in for a couple of days just to make sure they didn't take it out too early. Otherwise, they probably would have had to put another one back in. So day two was once again followed with a couple of blood tests and obs every few hours. I could relax a lot more on day two as I knew that the transplant was a definite success as the kidney started working. But I was still in pain and uncomfortable and just wanted to get out of there. But that doesn't come, that doesn't come the day after you've had a transplant. So days two to four were pretty stable and pretty similar. Where I just had bloods taken a couple day, uh, a couple of times with throughout the day, and I had obs every now and then just to make sure my temperature and everything was okay, and I wasn't producing any infection or whatnot. Hey guys, sorry, it's Future Kieran here. I forgot to include a very important part of the recovery process. And that is the mobility stage where you get up out of bed and start moving around just to get your body working again. So it was about day three when I was able to get up out of bed with some assistance from the, the physiotherapists. And on day three, all they did is get me standing up and maybe just moving around my bed, just walking around it just to get my legs working again. Day four, they would get me out onto the ward corridor and do a couple of lengths up and down the corridor just to try and get a bit more distance in where I'm walking. And then finally, between days five and six would be when the physiotherapist would help you uh, navigate up and down stairs again, just in preparation for when you are going home. You the doctors would know that you'd be safe to go home and you can help yourself up the stairs and mobilise yourself to get to where you need to get to. Anyway, just thought I'd quickly sneak this bit in here and we'll go back to the past now. Now day four was when I had my neckline taken out, finally, as they knew it was safe at that point to take it out. And I also had my drain removed from after surgery. Now, during a kidney transplant, the surgeons will put a drain just into the side where your kidney is, just so it can remove any blood, so there's no too internal bleeding, and it allows the kidney to flush through properly, so it can get the urine and your blood working properly. So when the doctors remove this, all they pretty much do is tell you to take a deep breath in, and then within five seconds, they're just yanking it out of pretty much the side of your abdomen. Now that sounds painful, but surprisingly, it wasn't actually that painful. It was just a bit uncomfortable as you could feel it coming out. But it was over within five seconds. And that was the same sort of thing with the neckline. Now on day five, however, that's when I had my catheter removed, which is what they also put in for a transplant. Now, some of you might know what a catheter is, some of you might not. But basically, a catheter was put in as, because I'd had surgery on my bladder, I needed some assistance to be able to pass it in. So they put a catheter in to help me pee, or wee, just so I'm not building up a load of urine and wasting my body. Now, once again, removing the catheter is the same sort of way as the drain and the neckline. They just yank it out. However, what's different about this is they're yanking it out of a place where you don't really want something ripped out of. <laughs> Which is the place where your wee comes from. <laughs> so once again, it was the same sort of thing. It was over within a few seconds. And once again, surprisingly, not painful. Just a bit uncomfortable. The only big issue I had with removing the catheter, which I'm sure other kidney transplant patients can relate to, is once your catheter's been removed, your blood is still very weak. So you're pretty much having to go for the next 12 hours, you're pretty much having to go to the bathroom like every 15, 20 minutes. So that was another night where I didn't get much sleep at all. So now we're on day seven post-transplant. And this was finally the day where I was able to be discharged and go home. 
Now, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's about a week, give or take, for a kidney transplant patient to go from surgery to being discharged. However, that would tend to vary depending on how smoothly your recovery goes and that there's no side effects from it or any complications as a matter of fact. So after going home and being discharged, I had to take it very easy, but this still wasn't over yet. This is only just the beginning of the recovery process. As at this point, this is where I had to return back to hospital three times a week for the next six weeks. Now this was just to monitor the kidney, have bloods taken, make sure everything's working fine and that there's no complications or any sudden changes in my recovery. So luckily enough for me, this was quite easy and everything worked fine and doctors were happy. So apart from the back and two from Liverpool, which was like 45 minutes each way, some people have it much worse, so I can't complain about that. <laughs> Uh, this next six weeks was pretty straightforward and I got to relax a bit more. However, then hits the um, the landmark of the good six week post transplant. Now, kidney patients or transplant patients would be able to tell you that on week six is the good old return to hospital day and to get your stent removed. Now, this was not a fun experience if I'm being 100% honest. However, it wasn't painful, so don't worry about pain. It was just a bit uncomfortable, as the stent is a mini plastic flexible tube that they put in your ureter, I think that's what it's called, which is the tube between your kidney and your bladder, which helps pass urine from your kidney to your bladder. Now, this tube's put in just to open it up, so that urine can pass through quite easily, as this is where the transplant surgery is attaching the new kidney to your bladder. So it needed that support to be able to pass urine through. So the, re the way they remove this then is by once again going through your genitalia, to be, set, to be blunt, and to go up, pass through your bladder and to Put it out with a tiny tool that way and bring it back out. Now this was not painful but it was very uncomfortable as there's a point where they where you hit where they tell you to relax your body so the muscles aren't tightened so they can get in easily and pull it out. But trying to relax when somebody's doing that to you <laughs> it's not easy whatsoever. And just to a just to rub salt into the wounds with this, once I had my stent removed, that was only halfway through for me, as that's when I had my PD catheter from my peritoneal dialysis removed too. Now, doctors are always advised that you should have general anaesthetic when having a PD catheter removed. However, due to some miscommunication between the surgeon and, and guessing the doctors, I was led to believe that they are able to you remove your PD catheter after the stent by just pulling it out. And that's what was done to me. And that's where the pain kicked in, as obviously that wasn't something that was supposed to happen, as I was supposed to be under general for that. But instead, the surgeon just yanked it out. Luckily, there was no complications with that, just a bit of pain. And I'm pretty sure after the consultants of mine found out how this happened, I'm pretty sure that surgeon got a good telling off. But once this land landmark was passed, from there, from so this is about the six week mark, up until the three month mark I was on, once a week visits to the hospital for my um, transplant clinic and to have bloods done. So that's pretty much how the recovery process works. However, personally for me, it was about the three month mark when we found out that my FSGS returned and that's when I had to have a biopsy and put back on plasma exchanges. But that's kind of irrelevant from the transplant recovery. As this video is just to provide you guys with my personal experience on transplant recovery and try and compare it to a typical recovery process. 
Now I hope this video was a bit more easy to watch than my previous ones. I'd love it if you could leave some feedback, whether it's positive or not, anything can be taken and to be used to provide better content for you guys. So if you want to be a bit harsh, that's no problem whatsoever. Whatsoever? Whatsoever. Thank you so much guys again for watching this week. Take care and I should see you all next week now. I'm going to try and stick to weekly uploads from now on as I've had my epiphany. And I'm hoping I can provide better content and make it a bit more entertaining for you guys. So thank you, take care and I'll see you next week. Good. Bye.